Dear colleagues, welcome to the December 2023 webinar of the local governments and municipal authorities constituency in relation to COP28. Uh, this will be more like a debrief from our engagement at COP28, and we will also use this uh, webinar as an opportunity to discuss about our our initial ideas for priorities in the calendar for 2024. For those uh, who are joining here in this webinars, um, first of all, my name is Yunus Arikan. I'm the Director of Global Advocacy at ICLE, Local Government for Sustainability, and I'm also serving as the focal point of the LGMA constituency to the UNFCC. These webinars are uh, periodically held every month um, in two time zones for Eastern and Western Hemisphere. Um, for these webinars, we usually follow uh, around one hour of a session and then we start with around 30 or 40 minutes of a presentation and then we open the floor for interventions or complimentary remarks or questions and answers. Um, if there are any burning issues, you can always type your questions and these sessions are recorded and also made available on ICLA's YouTube channel. Um, we are just allowing maybe 15 more seconds for all the colleagues to settle down for this session. We are aware uh, we are just at the end of the year, beginning of the end of year break. So we may expect some colleagues may not be joining us, uh, but we thought this is still valuable for us to have um, a recap or a debrief um, of COP28. And we will certainly continue this monthly webinars in the year to come. Uh, we will also continue with our monthly bulletin. Uh, December, we will not have any uh, edition, but we'll start our monthly bulletins, LGMA monthly bulletins from January onwards. With that, I think we are good to go. In today's webinar, I'm also delighted that I will be joined by my colleague Ariel Dekovic from ICLE, ICLE communications team, head of the communications team, and our colleague Lea Renaldar from UNEP that will also join us. In, in the next few minutes. So our agenda is uh, we go through uh, a background of, of uh, the the LGMA and how we prepared for COP28. Uh, we have, uh, we will have a discussion about what exactly happened at COP28 in terms of overall outcomes and what's the mission of these. Uh, then we'll focus uh, the, to LGMA in engagement at COP with, from interventions to our statements to our uh, events like ELCAS and Ministerial and also Pavilion and others. And the last slide will be reserved for our uh, roadmap to our 24, 25. Um, I see a couple of colleagues uh, relatively new, at least the ones, the names that are, that are new for me. Uh, so this first couple of slides may be helpful for them if they haven't joined us before. Uh, First of all, who is LGMA? We are the voice of towns, cities, and regions in the UNFCC process since 95, and we have particularly been active on the way towards Paris when there was a new agreement. We have made our first achievement there officially and the major achievement with the recognition of, of all levels of governments. Since then, we have been implementing, involved in the implementation. Uh, in Glasgow in 2021, we made another achievement where the urgent need for multi-level action was recorded in the, again, preamble. And uh, we have also started to deliver this uh, notion, especially with in Sharm el at COP27, with uh, the first ever ministerial on urban and climate, as well as the surge initiative. Um, and that's how we have come to, to uh, COP28. Throughout the year, we are not only focusing on the end of the year, but throughout the year, we're engaging in the UNFC process. We are supporting the presidencies. And we're interacting with the parties because they are the ones who table statements or text on the negotiation documents. Um, so we have specific working groups uh, on different topics. Uh, we have monthly webinars and monthly bulletins. And we have a WhatsApp group. Uh, and in this uh, working groups, I think we discussed in the morning that we also have to now explicitly refer to the, the communication working group. Because especially at COP28, we have seen how much crucial what a crucial role they play and was also a very good community uh, that, that helped all the advocacy work elevated further. 
Um, this is an old uh, structure because we have been under the, the authority of the presidency, of the Egyptian presidency, with the first day of the COP when the president was officially uh, elected, uh, then their term has officially ended. Um, and of course, we will start to map this in terms of the next presidency, which is from Azerbaijan. Uh, but what we know here is that the this, this, uh, list of uh, leaders from the 28th presidency played a remarkable role. And we, as LGMA, had been advanced, engaged with them in so many areas. And from the, their top leader, from Sultan Jabbar to their other junior level staff, and which was a huge delegation, one of the biggest delegation I've ever seen from presidency, we have expressed once again our gratitude for their interest and collaboration and for their leadership and vision and especially innovations they have introduced into this process throughout the year and at COP28. They have really uh, engaged with us uh, and all the other stakeholders. So it was a remarkable leadership. What we have always been saying that um, usually we are the ones as LGM in leading the advocacy, but uh, the more the multi-level action has become a, a, a niche area, there are more and more inside the NFCC and outside the NFCC initiatives coming up. Um, and of course, these this year peaked. Uh, there were so many efforts moving uh, along. And therefore, we were managing this ecosystem as appropriate, uh, respecting each other's own uh, specific mandates. Uh, among them, the most important was the, the partnership between presidency, COP28 presidency and the Bloomberg Plan Therapies which was uh, primarily aiming for the local climate action summit, but it was the key instrument to do to end up with this championship, which we'll discuss later on, which this this process has, has played a huge role. It's, it's a huge momentum, but all the other actors, all the other processes really contributed both before and after and during the COP, especially uh, all these mechanisms uh, have helped uh, us to build on the, the outcome of, of CHAMP as well and ALCAS uh, throughout these days and hours even in, at COP28. Um, before COP28, before Dubai, and before arriving to Dubai, we were already excited and almost confident that this COP will be unique for us because throughout the year, inside the NFCs and outside, we had so many processes, um, governmental uh, or uh, UN, uh, have ad acknowledged the role of multi-level action and urbanization from Pacific uh, and uh, Asia and Africa to Latin America, from Europe to G G7. Therefore, we were saying that this COP will be different, and we are very happy that we were not uh, that we were proved to be correct. Um, and we will discuss. Not all of them have found their ways explicitly, but all of them have helped us to reach the achievements we have seen here at COP28. Uh, throughout the year, we were also very, very excited because we have an ambitious uh, LGMA roadmap uh, position paper. It was most inclusive uh, in the past years. It was a, a homework, both for us, but also for the nations, what it means to deliver multi-level action at, at the UN and at the domestic level. This, uh, uh, just a, a couple of, uh, of, of colleagues, this was announced at the beginning of the COP on the 30th of November. And during these two weeks, we also have received new uh, partners endorsing our, our, our position paper. We have reached, I think, more than 70 partners. Um, and this uh, link at the bottom uh, takes you directly to the to the final uh, partnership who has uh, endorsed. You can see networks, you can see individual cities and towns and regions, states. Uh, so it, it reflects our diversity. And this, this comprehensive view also paid it very, very uh, appropriately during the COP, whenever there was a discussion, we always consulted our position paper and it guided us. It became our our our, our torch barrier bearer so that it was uh, giving us uh, the, the the flexibility to how we will respond to the topics involved in the in the in the negotiations. Uh, Throughout the year, we also were involved. In, we were involved in an exciting uh, experience, stock take for climate emergency. The local leadership for subnational inputs to global stock take. So we really took the stock take discussion at the local level, uh, and it was remarkable from global north and global south and all six continents. Um, we had so many exciting uh, experiences of how communities and local and regional governments can connect with their. Uh, 
own commitments and disease and climate justice at the local level so that then they can feed into the, the global debate. And we have made so many events happening, uh, taking place in, in, at COP and, and all the outcomes. And we also had a number of leaders who participated in the exercise, also sharing their experiences. And we were also very glad to enjoy the collaboration with the youth constituency, UNGO. And that was also a result of our efforts because engaging decision local, engaging youth at the local and international decision making was an article in, in paragraph 62 in, in Glasgow PAC. And this local stock takes were one of the best examples how this can be put into action. Uh, and of course, all these mobilization, all these outcomes, ministerial statements can only make sense uh, if it is being into the negotiation document. And that's why we were again very excited because on the way to COP, Dubai, the global stock take output submissions demonstrated that uh, around 75% of the, the whole university parties, you can see here only the 19 submissions, but some of them are groups of parties and the diversity is so huge. And they had, of course, diverse uh, level of uh, recognition or the varying degrees of uh, their uh, interest to see a multi-level action and urbanization in this global stock take output. But this were already giving us the confidence that we will work with those partners and we will make sure uh, their views can be reflected in the outcome document. Uh, during this process, we were also very excited with the this, the the language put forward by the co-chairs of the SPs, which were really reflecting how we'd like to feed into the NDC process, meaning that the, 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 the national commitments can be more ambitious and more implementable if they were designed together with us and implemented with us. And this was exactly the spirit of the, the champ already. Um, so the, the language that was put forward here was very, very helpful for us. And at the end, you, we will see now that the, the, the final outcome has some elements of these uh, inputs into the, the final outcome document as well. These were our uh, mobilization before Dubai. And, and uh, before going to what we did in Dubai, let's see what Dubai resulted uh, ended up with, uh, which is the, the bird's eye view of the achievements. First of all, it, it is branded as the United Emirates consensus, as, as named by the president at the closing plenary. This consensus refers to five decisions. Of course, uh, COP and, and, and Paris Agreement processes and, and SPs had adopted, I think, around 50 more sessions, or 50 more decisions, but these are the most important ones. Uh, and these are the ones that are making the most impact and they were the most important uh, agenda items that were expected to have a result by COP. Uh, I think the most, the, outside these, the most, uh, let's say, critical process that did not result is the market mechanisms uh, or climate finance or climate uh, market, carbon market mechanisms, uh, which was, of course, interesting uh, to see because uh, all these years, they were the ones almost making progress. So this also shows, um, of course, market mechanisms is an agenda, both for developing countries, but the developed ones. But the, the, the result that this tension has not been sorted out is already reflecting how Global South is also putting a lot of uh, pressure and also uh, the transparency and accountability of carbon markets will be much more, uh, let's say, scrutinized in the way forward. Uh, we have seen that uh, non-market me mechanisms have advanced. We would uh, still wish to see urbanization in the non-market approach, and that's why it's a process going forward. What we see here is that the five elements, first of all, youth stock take. I think this was an additional uh, milestone um, in the power sector, we have the high-level climate action champions. Now we have the youth champions embedded in institutional mechanisms. Uh, we heard the younger colleagues were a bit un uncomfortable. We are, we in principle, we welcome the institutionalization, institutionalization of this process, and we believe it could also improve in, in the, during the implementation phase. Loss and damage was remarkable. It was adopted at the beginning of the COP. Loss and damage funds in terms of the whole 30 years, this was one of the things that were being on the table, but it just on the last uh, 16 months, it became into a reality. So in that sense, it was one of the long lasted uh, weighted uh, process, but it was the fastest that was agreed, designed and adopted. So in that sense, it was a remarkable uh, process. And, it be and the fact that it was adopted at the beginning of the COP 
already gave a huge impetus that this COP will be remarkable and it will it will be uh, ambitious. Um, the other decisions are on stock take. We will discuss about this shortly. Uh, the the just transition work program is now starting to be evolved, and we have participated in the discussions. Mitigation uh, work program has a number of elements on road transport and energy. Let's hope in the in the next uh, iteration there will be additional elements related to urbanization as well. Um, global goal on adaptation was one of the expected outcomes, um, and and that's why we are excited to see all this happening. If we look at this again in a, in, a, in a holistic view, this was one of the most ambitious, most inclusive, and, and the one that has praised and practically demonstrated multi-level action in action. Ambitious because we have a concrete language transitioning away from fossil fuels. For the first time ever, renewable energies have a target in the UN documents. We know since Rio plus 10, 2002, renewable energy community was asking for a goal and this was the, for the first time in the UNFCC document, they managed to get this. Uh, it's not even in the SDG 7 that there's a target for that. Um, loss and damage, as we discussed. And very importantly, there's one paragraph 191 in the, the stock take that there's a roadmap of the president. It is not high level champion, but it is presidency has a, has a roadmap now. Uh, it's not clear what will be contained in this, but it is highly likely. All the announcements on the Rogue Climate Action Summit and the related initiatives will be part of this roadmap. And we have already stated to the Brazilian delegation and Emirates that we believe CHAMP could be one of the elements that could be part of this roadmap as well. So ambitious, that has never been uh, visible in the processes before. Inclusive in the sense that Rogue Climate Action Summit was presumably the heads of state level, but except very few short couple of hours the rest of these two days were open to all parties' engagement. I see a lot of uh, stakeholders, uh, individuals interacting with the heads of state, prime ministers, presidents over these two days in the in various corridors, in various sessions. I remember how it was stressful and, and challenging in Copenhagen, in Paris, to connect to those leaders was almost impossible. But here, they were literally hand in hand and face to face with so many stakeholders. This was, again, a result of the presidency's style that they have designed the, the process. Um, it was not just this first week of remarkable announcements, but throughout the two weeks, the presidency continued this inclusive approach. COP28 open dialogue was the first process we have created in 2016 under the UNFCC. But uh, it was aimed to be bringing non-parties and parties together on the same table and have a dialogue, frank dialogue. But in uh, Glasgow and Sharm el it was very limited, almost uh, not existent. Um, but the presidency, the Emirates presidency, really respected to this process. They take ownership and they brought all the parties on board. It was remarkable to see uh, so many um, G7 in China, EU, uh, umbrella group, uh, individual parties around the constituencies who were part of the dialogue. And this proved also to be one of the uh, nice uh, moments. And of course, the majlis, uh, as the president has announced, uh, that the ministers were talking face to face, not from the, the, the tables, but eye to eye and, and with frank conversation, which was transparent. Everybody was able to listen to this. Our representatives were able to listen in the room. This was a, a remarkable, again, opportunity to ensure that that, that the, those leaders, when they're making their statements, they were they should be frank and accountable to their communities. So that, that I think, was one of the factors that made the, 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 the outcome so ambitious. And traditional climate was talking on mitigation adaptation, but now in this climate emergency mode, we have a concrete agenda of initiatives and text on nature, on food, on culture, on health. These are the, in fact, these are always designed or discussed as the root causes of the climate crisis. So if we can make sure that these are addressed appropriately. If these are also connected to a transition from fossil fuels and then a hundred percent renewable future, then the real UNFCC response to climate emergency can be uh, delivered. And in fact, this is why it is turning the whole climate agenda into a very uh, ambitious mode. And obviously, we have a fantastic paragraph six one hundred sixty one on the multi level action. It explicitly says that parties should are urged to, to develop multi-level action, amongst others. 
let's remember this this language is extremely strong throughout these two weeks we have developed uh, we'll discuss it a number of documents we have proposed a number of other texts in collaboration in in coordination with the presidency uh, obviously we would have wished they could have been incorporated but even this sentence is extremely powerful enough um, therefore it gives us the confidence that we can build upon it um, let's remember in paris where they, we had the preamble paragraph. It was recognizing all levels of government. Then we have Glasgow. It was er, underlining the urgent need for multi-level action. But the text here in Dubai is urging parties for multi-level action. There couldn't be much more uh, clear. Uh, so in that sense, it's really that multi-level action is now in the surface and it is the most ambitious one. And we have not just one text, but 70 plus nations aligned or um, endorsing the CHAMP initiative uh, and we had another instrument, urbanization and climate ministerial. It, all of this makes the COP28 as the most successful for the LGM constants. And uh, among them, one of the things that we are very proud is that this COP, both before and during, had been an excellent example of reinforcing diversity, unity and the impact of LGM constituency from those who were on site with advocacy teams, comms teams, uh, technical teams. We were all around the rooms and across the spaces. Um, and when the more we reached to uh, the, the parties, the, the, the interaction with the negotiators, we were seeing that they were observing us and they were re reflecting and responding to us. And we are receiving so many good feedbacks that the advocacy style that we have delivered on site uh, and virtually was really supportive of the process that parties uh, have all benefited from this engagement. And we are seen as one of the most, uh, let's say, um, uh, professional engagement in this whole process. I'll, if I if I look at all these things, I know some people are comparing this event to Glasgow or Paris, but from my side, personally speaking, I believe this was a repetition of the 1992 Earth Summit. I know this because over these years, we have seen so many initiatives called uh, on, on the SDGs, and we have seen SDG summits, climate action summits. There was no other space like this COP, which was so much encompassing all the agendas and having a voice for all of them and providing response to all these topics. Uh, therefore, this COP really created a new level of engagement, a new level of working mode into UNFCC and to help the whole sustainability agenda in the 21st century. We uh, now are focusing more on how we have uh, reached these results, let's say. This um, compilation, these screenshots are in fact, are extracted from our website, uh, citiesandregions.org. This is the homepage of the LGMA constituency. I'm very happy that as of today, um, we have all our documents, all our statements, all our, our, our reports, um, daily daily bulletins uh, and web streams from our pavilion are all visible on one shop, stop shop that you can easily access and, and, and consult. Obviously, there may be missing documents and we will keep this updated, but we are confident that this captures what we have been doing in the most effective and, and, and prominent way. Um, if, we, if we go through that, um, Immediately, the day after the COP is concluded, we had compiled all the 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 um, uh, the, 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 the the responses of our partners, their heads of their organizations, their leaders at the subnational level. Uh, it has a huge uh, list, and it, we are very proud of our diversity. And it was also responding in a comprehensive manner. What we see is specific paragraphs listed here in the loss and damage. Three paragraphs, stock take, seven paragraphs, and adaptation, five paragraphs that is explicitly relevant for local and regional governments. And the, 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 the longer statement that is available on the website is con com com containing all these paragraphs and all these codes. And that's why we are saying that we have immediately responded and we are confident that we will be more actively involved in the implementation of these outcomes. This was not, um, this did not come by chance or it was not. Uh, it was not uh, given, let's say, um, but we have made a very careful strategy that we have uh, worked very carefully with the presidency, especially with the 
the results of the local climate action summit with the UN habitat, with the conclusion of the, the second uh, ministerial and urbanization climate ministerial, so that we can then gradually increase our pressure and increase our um, uh, publicity around what we want to achieve. And when the first text was released, um, it was in fact released, but the, this first text was a result of of, of the, the, the presidencies, uh, but it was a response to the, the last iteration of the, the negotiations. We said that if we want concrete outcomes, we have to now speak to the party because president, together with the champion initiative, and all the opportunities that was offered to us has delivered their their job. So it is now to parties to put pressure that they put on the text uh, relevant languages. So we have in, uh, initiated this step up campaign, and I think this was also a remarkable uh, journey. In just a couple of hours, we both uh, refined our message to the parties, which was shared through the the official channels to their focal points on site and virtually through their uh, email addresses. But we also mobilized a fantastic uh, public awareness campaign. We have used all our channels. Uh, as you have seen in this uh, slide, we have uh, from global north to south, from experts to the leaders, we have made them that that we should be making our, our, our all our efforts that these statements are now finding their ways to the, to the decision uh, making pro products. And I think this shows that this paid off in their, in terms of the, 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 the language as we have seen that was remarkable on, on what we could have uh, asked for. Obviously, the peak a moment of the two weeks was our uh, local climate action summit. Here you see uh, uh, the, the presentation of the summit on the COP28 presidency. It was for the first time we were in, in the blue zone in such a setting. Uh, it was part of the World Climate Action side events. And in fact, I don't remember, I don't, I, if I'm not wrong, other than the World Climate Action Summit, Local Climate Action Summit was one of the only, or if not the few, in it, events which are called a summit. So as such, it was again reflecting our, our, our skills. And it was two days. After the first hour uh, public event, we had uh, rolled out in the number of, I think it was 15 sessions, in the second day of 2nd December, and various announcements came up through the sessions. We had an Elkas hub, which was a home for uh, subnationals, more than 200 uh, leaders uh, were, were part of these discussions. Um, and uh, the first day, this public event has announced the CHAMP initiative, uh, the Coalition for High Ambition Multi-Level CHAMP, Multi-Level Partnerships. And by the day of the 1st of December, it was 63 countries who were endorsing. By the time COP concluded, we added seven more, eight more, and we ended up with 71 endorsers. That is, again, a remarkable achievement in terms of the diversity. Um, you can here see all the links, uh, the, 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 the program, the, 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 the webcast, um, as well as the, the space at the um, president's website as well. The second peak moment for us was um, the second ministerial for urbanization and climate. Uh, this morning, we enjoyed uh, uh, reflections from our colleague Rea Nanalder from UN Habitat. I assume she's not joining us today in the afternoon session, as far as I can see. So I will try to back her up. Uh, first of all, of course, a huge uh, applause uh, to applause to. UN Habitat leadership and my Muna Sheriff Executive Director and all our colleagues in the climate team, uh, Lea, Bernard, Serene, and who made this possible. But this uh, event uh, obviously has enjoyed the lessons learned from the first experience in Sharm el Sheikh, which was powerful because uh, building on this experience and building on the, the, the dialogue we had with the presidency, as well as the UN Habitat assembly did results in the June, this was for this time. It was at the biggest plenary of the COP Blue Zone. It was the most lively plenary I have ever seen in the COP28 and even in other COPs. Um, it was a remarkable participation with nations. Uh, the subnational leaders were mobilized through a collective consultation with LGMA constituency. We, we nominated all these potential names. And it was also, again, another innovation 
this was our first experience in, in Sharm el Sheikh, uh, presentation of uh, the importance of multi level action by a pair of leaders, which is Minister of Environment of Netherlands and Utrecht Mayor and COP27. This was only one example. Now we had at COP28, at this plenary, we had five examples from global north to south Canada, Germany, uh, Kiribati, um, uh, Togo, and um, Jordan. And then uh, our leaders from British Columbia, Amman, Bonn, Cloto One, and Tainano Urban Council were sitting on the same table next to their ministers and addressing one after each other. This was a remarkable achievement. We had at the opening, again, this was not the case in the, in the first experience, we had the opening, an LGMA speaker, Mayor Abi Binay was there on the podium with us. We had in, in, in an autonomous statement that it doesn't have to be always, uh, we are aware political uh, issues are not always perfect, and sometimes there may be differences between the, the, the national and, and subnational uh, leadership, and, and therefore we had space for others uh, without necessarily with their own national delegation. And at the closing, we had a fantastic presentation by Mayor of Belém and Minister of Cities of Brazil, which was already giving us the, the segue to COP30, because Belém will be the host of this COP. Um, there was, again, an, another innovation which was not possible in the previous year. We have a joint outcome statement. When it says joint, it refers to connection to the ELCAS and to the ministerial. So we had two peaking moments, but we had one joint statement. And we, as, as LGMA, were also providing inputs to this drafting document. And it is also available, and it also helped us to uh, influence the decisions of the, of the COP28 as well. Again, all these uh, documentation is available from the website. You can reach them through the LGMA website, but uh, from UN Habitat, from COP28, and UNFCC, you can also find the specific links as well. Uh, we believe this was one of the, the most exactly uh, uh, remarkable moments of COP28. However, we also know COP28 goes for two full weeks, um, and therefore, for, throughout these two full weeks, beyond these two peaking moments, uh, the multi-level action urbanization pavilion served as the global stage for the subnational. It was our home in the blue zone, and, and we were delighted. This year, we have uh, collaborated with UN Habitat uh, in co-convening the space. That's why the name is a bit advanced. And last year, it was only multi-level action pavilion. This time, we have multi-level action and urbanization pavilion. And we had uh, continued to, to enjoy the support from Scotland. But this year, we also have welcomed Bloomberg Philanthropies as the co-host of this space. Um, we had in numerous partners joining us um, uh, through various sessions, hosts, and their uh, ex experience and their, their inputs to our dialogues demonstrated diversity of topics we are covering uh, from subnationals to the UN agencies. From, from the civil society to to the to the to the national governments involved in this process, um, this um, this also uh, a photo from the, the high level opening uh, also reflects the the mode of this pavilion. And I must confess, uh, I remember uh, there were so many pavilions this year, but ours was still one of the most transparent, dynamic, interactive, uh, and professionally well well prepared. All our sessions uh, were webcasted, and we have so many people commenting and, and contributing through online, and they are sharing reflections that they felt they were at COP28 with us through these opportunities. Um, and here you see uh, Minister of Cities of Brazil. We have uh, the, the mayors. We have Al Gore, the Vice President uh, of the US. Um, uh, we had uh, also, you have the executive director, and Scottish First Minister, but unfortunately they had to leave before this photo was taken up. But this was the notion throughout the two weeks and, and all the sessions you can access uh, on the web stream uh, of our, our pavilion. And this was the moment for two full weeks we discussed how multi-level action can be shaped and improved, how urbanization offers of solutions to climate action or climate crisis, and how we can address loss and damage especially knowing that Scotland, the, the government who really have pushed the loss of damage in the, in, 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 into the global space, they also hosted their own events with our partners. Um, so we were very proud of, of the diversity we had 
uh, achieved in our pavilion. Obviously, we did not mention it here, but throughout the two weeks in so many other pavilions, the national pavilions and, and Marrakesh partnership spaces, we have been uh, seeing active engagement of our leaders or experts. Uh, and, and that's why it makes, again, really an important uh, milestone that this COP was significantly much, much better than anyone before in the past. Um, and that's why we are very proud of. I see Ariel now uh, on the line. Um, all this advocacy wouldn't be wouldn't be uh, possible without an appropriate coordination and, and 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 amplification by the communication team of the LGMA constituency led by Ariel. Uh, so I'd like to give you the floor, Ariel, so that you share with your experiences in in the communication and dissemination. Great, thanks, Eunice. Um, and actually, let's go back one slide because I did get some numbers um, that I want to share about the. Um, about the pavilion, um, which are very exciting. They're just sort of um, big numbers. So we had over 70 events, which I think we maybe have there, but um, uh, featuring 288 speakers from 66 countries to an audience, an in-person audience of 1,500, um, but we did stream the entire thing. So um, all of those are available live. Um, so many, many more people actually saw these sessions. So um, really big. Uh, thanks to everyone on the line who participated and, of course, to our amazing events team. Um, so we can now go forward again. Great. So, um, yes, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we did on the communication side. And as Eunice was saying, you know, that dividing line between advocacy and comms gets really thin at an event like uh, COP. So, of course, um, we are, uh, you know, sort of at your service and, you um, and we really enjoyed working very closely with um, also your comms teams uh, of our partner organizations. So I look forward to continuing that next year. Um, some of the things I just wanted to bring up that we think worked really well, obviously these um, 14 interventions that we had, plus the dozens of additional interventions at LCAS at the press conference um, uh, within the ministerial. Um, but then, uh, of course, our daily um, bulletin, our um, sort of drumbeat of statements that came out during COP, where we really came together as a constituency, showing both the unity of our voice, and that was something I think um, uh, Councillor uh, Gillibrand maybe said at some point that you know we we really came to this COP in a very unified way, and I think our comms uh, very much reflected that um, so that unity, but also the depth of voices and um, and so you know, sort of that combination of having our unified statements and then having people bring their quotes from their leaders and from their um, local and regional leaders as well really um, highlighted that. So I like that uh, kind of reflection of our values and the way that we're working in our co communications. Um, a couple of other things to highlight would be our CHAMP reaction. So uh, pretty much as soon as CHAMP was um, announced, we dropped our, uh, you know, vocal support of it um, with many, many organizations weighing in in a very short amount of time. So that was great. Um, and then uh, also, again, highlighting our, our outcome statement. Um, many brains and hands went into writing that. And I think it was a very strong statement that sets us up very well for 2024 going into 2025. Um, and uh, and again, just, um, you know, a unified voice, but um, also a depth, a very great depth of participation. Um, and I guess, you know, we'll have many more conversations about processes in 2024, but I would say that we are um, really, one thing I didn't say this morning that I do want to mentioned today is we have a very, uh, we have built this uh, newsletter subscriber list for the Daily Bulletin, and it's really taken off this past year. And I hope that that's something that we uh, all together as all of our organizations can both benefit from um, and also begin uh, continue to build throughout the years as we grow this sort of larger audience that's interested in the work of LGMA. So, you know, those subscribers are maybe larger, you know, much larger than this group is, thousands of people, um, and they're really engaged, you know, just from a communication standpoint, um, the numbers that we see of like how many people on a daily basis are opening these emails is like mind boggling to me. I don't, we don't see numbers like this on our other newsletters. So um, uh, I think that's very exciting and it was exciting to see how um, kind of uh, folks within our constituency really um, took that as a, you know, as a, a piece that they wanted to be
be featured in and have their announcements in and really um, saw it as a as a good place for um, you know showing off our uh, the strength of our constituency. So um, I'll leave it at that. I think I covered everything, you know. Thank you, thank you, Ariel, and I also again uh, congratulations to all our colleagues in the communications space. Uh, on this note, I would like to once again. Uh, our bulletin, the last bulletin was two days after COP was concluded, so we tried to make it as, as fresh as possible. But uh, the next bulletin will be in January, very likely in the third week of January. We will still keep updated our, our website so that in case there is anything missing, please alert us, either me or Ariel, so that when we release the, the first edition of January edition of the LGMA bulletin, we make sure that all of your work is visible and 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 finding its audience uh, as, as, as much as possible. Uh, but with police so far, we have captured a lot of, most of the, the big portion of it are, are there. Um, and, and this uh, brings us towards the end of our presentation, last two slides. I would like to once again underline the importance of the local stock takes throughout this year, and especially with this outcome, with this champ now being on, on, on action, it becomes even more important that we do not stop the the spirit of bringing the global debate to the town halls and feeding the global debates with the input from our town halls. Therefore, we are committed to continue this experience in the years ahead, uh, turning the stock takes into town hall cops. Uh, an idea is that every year, not just 25 that we have experienced this year, but thousands of cities can dedicate at least a day in their uh, uh, communities, a debate on their commitments, but also NDCs and their climate justice, so that the reports or the outcomes are feeding into the COP much more earlier as possible, and they could be benefiting from this information so that those leaders do not have to come to the COPs every day, but we can even make it much more uh, available and accessible so that we demonstrate that in this urban world, through this digitalization and through this decentralization, we can make sure that local and regional governments are bridged between communities and the global policy making so that then our decisions can be much more robust and, and immediately delivered uh, in action. The last slide, uh, this is our 2024 calendar. It's obviously a lot of agendas are still to be defined, but this gives us an overview. Uh, let's remember February, we will start with our coordination with things in Barcelona under the Global Task Force. Immediately, we will go to Nairobi for the 6th Union Environment Assembly. This one is important because most of the climate ministers are, in fact, environment ministers. So this will be the moment where immediately they will discuss the implementation of the Emirates consensus. Uh, March will be Paris Buildings Forum, Japan Zero Carbon City Forum, and UN Habitat Executive Board. June will be very busy. In Bonn, we will have the, the UNFCC talks, but their cities will be also connected. ICLE will gather its World Congress in Sao Paulo, and we would suggest that this will be the moment where we would announce our roadmap to Belém 2030. Sorry, 2025, COP30. Um, we have already have been having good consultation with the, the, the Brazilian government and so many partners. We look forward to welcoming you there. Um, in July, the New York City will host a high-level political forum. We're assuming that Urban 7 Mayor Summit may happen at that moment because the ambiguity at the moment is because of the fact that there is no um, agenda of G7 at the moment as of today. So we will be aligning ourselves as much as it is clarified. July, August, September will be the years, the moments for regional climate weeks, traditional for global south region, but maybe this year we may think about the European stock, the European Regional Climate Week as well. In September, UN Summit of the Future in New York City will take place. We will have a biodiversity COP in Colombia. This is also very relevant considering what has been achieved in Dubai and what is expected in Belém so that Colombia can play a very important role. We have already a very powerful agenda in the biodiversity negotiation so that having this bridging is important and in particular, Minister of Environment of Colombia, former Environment Secretary of Bogota, Susana Mohammed, has always been very active and very, very dear to the LGMA constituency. So with her leadership, I think we can expect a very ambitious and exciting moment in Colombia. 
November will be crazy. We will have Cairo World Arab Forum. Uh, this is continuity from our Sharm al Sheikh as well uh, outcomes. We will see G20 Leaders Summit in Brazil, and we are hearing that our colleagues Rio de Janeiro and Urban 20 Leadership is planning to have the Urban 20 Mayor Summit also in the same days. This may influence our agenda in Baku, COP29, because it's almost the same dates. But we are also aware Urban 20 is representing most of the capital of, of the, the G20 countries, but the LGM is also diverse. They have much more other cities and towns and states as well. So we will make sure we can have an, an appropriate linkage between Brazil and Baku. But uh, let's be re aware this year there will be two important agendas. The, the elections in the European Union on the European Parliament, which will shape the future of European Commission and therefore our activities as the European Commission being the biggest donor and partner and the US uh, federal elections. Um, it's also important because uh, the way their relations of our cities and states in the US with their federal government will shape the rest of the process. It will not, it will never stop it. We all have experienced in the past but it will be uh, how 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 effective and how aligned it will be will be the, the the signal. But of course, the the federal government of the U.S. will also shape the funding and the global justice and global collaboration with other countries as well. With those in mind, there's three main priorities that we can think in the in the years ahead, in the next two years ahead, is that first of all to focus on champ, the delivery of champ, both uh, in concrete national climate plans from the CHAMP signatories that demonstrate that they bring on board their local environments, but also CHAMP in the sense of the synergy with other processes like what we have been discussing about the surge, the action initiative, uh, the UNFCC Global Climate Action Agenda, and the NDC partnership, the latter in relation that CHAMP is not an initiative of cities and regions. It is an initiative of national governments. It is an initiative, it's a commitment of national governments to work with us. Uh, and what their most effective partnership, which is led by national governments, is the NDC partnership. And over these years, we have benefited a lot in collaboration with the NDCP partnership. NDC partnership, they were already contributing to the development of the CHAMP. So we hope this, this architecture will be much better interconnected, complementary, and it will be very simplified so that our subnational leaders can also see how they can commit, how can they receive funding, how they can end up to the NDC would be very clear in the next uh, days ahead uh, and days and weeks ahead. While we focus on global agendas, let's focus on town hall cops. Let's define our hundreds or thousands of cities and regions who can bring their uh, diversity and, and, and inputs to the, the new era of climate action through their gatherings, but also connected to the UNFCC. And finally, we all know UNFCC negotiations continue. This never-ending story. There's always new agenda items coming up, and we have to be professional in our submission, in participation into their workshop. We have seen the benefit when we followed the loss and damage fund, when we followed the GSD meetings, we produce the results, then we can bring the outcomes at the COP at the year end. Therefore, year-round engagement is extremely important. With this in mind, um, we have 10 more minutes left. It was a bit longer than what we have envisaged. Um, we would really be hope, willing to hear from our partners, especially those involved in this journey. I'm seeing them, a number of them are already the, in the, the attendees. Feel free to either type in your comments or, or share your insights, either as a Q&A box or feel free to raise your hand so that we can unmute you so that you can intervene as well. We know it's not easy to follow uh, such a long presentation with one or two speakers only. This time, as I said, uh, Leah was able to join us in the morning's recording. You can also hear from Leah how she had uh, uh, also uh, conveyed the, the reflections from you. And have it at sight. Eva Banis from CMR is saying that Sim Tools huge. Thanks. Thank you, Eva. We also enjoyed a lot your, your support and leadership, uh, personally and institutionally, uh, both on site in, in the 
first week, but also throughout the second week, you were helping us remotely. That was really appreciated. And I think that goes to all of us. Um, uh, that was a, a nice collaboration altogether. Um, I don't see too many hands or... Um, Eva, why don't you speak yourself? Because you have typed another thing. After 12 cops, I feel this one has made a huge difference. That's very nice to hear such such a sharing of the sentiment together. Uh, so that that's good. Shannon, um, Shannon Niedema uh, is typing in the QA box about curious on approaches to encourage meaningful implementation of the CHAMP pledge. Any ideas? Not sure Canadian government um, was thinking beyond state level. Uh, Shannon, I think um, it is exactly the now uh, back to reality. So celebration is good. And now we have to go back to the, the job. Um, Canada, I think, should be a priority country because the minister was impressive. Uh, the delegation was always working with us so closely. And in particular, Shannon, I'd like to underline that Canada will be the we will be presiding the G7 in 2025. So bringing the Canadian collaboration, Canadian uh, uh, collaboration on multi-level action to the G7, which is already advanced a lot, uh, would be a huge opportunity for Canadian cities, municipalities, provinces. Uh, at COP, we had seen Federation of Canadian Municipalities delegation was there. We had uh, premiers from Quebec, British Columbia, and others. So let's let's make sure that we follow up and, and make sure that we really demonstrate Canada as the priority countries which can show CHAMP as a good practice. Um, as cities, what can we do to advance CHAMP at the local level? I think that's a good question. I don't know the author of this uh, submission. Um, I think what we should be saying is that, first of all, uh, town hall cops, please focus on that. Try to make this at your host, but if you are in one of those 70 countries, we should be reaching out to you saying that here is your national government. Uh, please, first of all, react to them, congratulate them, commend them that their commitment and offer your support. I think this will be a process. Just be aware the, the ELCA's um, implementation partners already had their debriefing yesterday, and I'm sure after the beginning of the year, they will come up with a with a with a process. And let's remember, we assume that Champ will be one of those initiatives under this roadmap to Bella by the COP28, COP29, and COP30 presidency. So let's make sure that this is also part of that machinery. But definitely, every city should go to their country to say that we heard that you committed for multi-level action. We are very happy and grateful. Here we are. Let's work together. That's the minimum you can do. I feel you should have a similar strategy ahead of COP29. That's again from Eva. Lots of good points worked out this time and huge thanks. Uh, oh, sorry, more coming. Um, uh, and huge thanks for the speed to put things online and make the LGM available to everyone on site and at a distance. From Eva, thanks a lot. Yes, indeed, uh, LGM is be becoming more professional every every year uh, and every step. Uh, and I think we will increase this kind of good practices, and we will uh, add additional tools if necessary. Shannon is appreciating uh, the comment on Canada. Let's continue to stay in touch, Shannon. Andrea Matrosov, um, will we hear more from ICLE Canada about engaging with our national level? Very excited about staying engaged. Definitely, um, our colleagues from ICTA Canada were not on site, but as I said, we had FCM, we had other provinces. Let's make sure that all on board, um, and I'm sure um, with with our colleagues from ICTA Canada, we will get back to you also on that, back into this process. Uh, let's give them some time to digest after the new year. David K., uh, what would you say the key message of for municipal leaders should be? especially those who don't follow COPs closely, but do care about climate policy. Ariel, maybe you, you, you think about this, uh, because that goes to this kind of the, the, the connection from advocacy to communication, how you convey this message. But before you respond, I have one more message from Malini, the CEO of the Globe International, the Network of Parliamentarians. 
congratulations units and team. The LGMA Council has raised the game for all of us. Happy to be working with you in partnership on the governance and delivery agenda, bringing the LGMA parliamentary constituents closer together. Fully agreed, Malini, and also congratulations to the parliamentary pavilion, which was just one floor above us. And throughout the two weeks, you also made a remarkable engagement. And indeed, as we discussed, multi-level action encompasses not only mayors or governors, it encompasses also legislative bodies of subnational leadership as well. So this means councillors, parliamentary members. Therefore, we have a lot to share together and, and make it even more effective. Ladislas from Ralga, LGMA needs to time to work on local stock take to lobby parties to be included in global stock take. Definitely, but uh, Ladislas, let's remember, parties from now on will freeze the discussion of stock take for the next two years because the first priority now to bring the new NDCs by 2025. And definitely, we should tell them that benefit from the local stock experience and make sure that you hear them appropriately. Malin is mentioning about London Climate Week uh, because uh, Lobby is based in, 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 in the UK in London and Malin is already part of the Greater London Assembly. Um, definitely, this uh, New York City Climate Week, London Climate Week, that is exactly what should happen in every city and every region. And inside of this week's, we should have the town hall talks. That will be the most impactful. This depends on, of course, the priorities and timing, but definitely we have to make use of it. Having attended COPs from COP22 up to now, the COP28 made the difference for LGMA. It was a result of commitment, teamwork, and hard work. Fantastic, Ladislas. And, and we will, of course, I forgot to add you, we have to include uh, Rwanda because Rwanda will host the NDCP strategy meeting in June. And definitely with Ralga and Rwanda, we will be on the front line because Rwanda was also part of uh, all the achievements we have engaged in the NDCs in towards uh, Glasgow, but also in the stock tech as well. Ariel, would you like to take that challenge? I thought the challenge. <laughs> well, I was I was going to say I think there's some folks on the call who really could answer this uh, very well because you know they're working directly with leaders. Um, you know, I think shorthand, uh, you know, the interest is in uh, financing and how this actually translates into oper sort of operalization at the local level of, uh, of, of you know, of, of the policies, essentially. But in the end, we're talking about actually, um, you know, creating real opportunity for change on the ground. Um, either through showing that we're already doing it or uh, translating back into um, kind of bringing the policy down. So, but I mean, I, I, I am certainly not the expert here uh, in terms of what resonates really well with mayors. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, there are folks on the, on the call who might be able to weigh in, but uh, also uh, it's a great question, David. And I think it's something that, um, we, as we're thinking about our strategy for 2024 and 2025, really having um, uh, an audience question of, you know, I think that's something we started to do uh, with the the, the uh, LGMA statement where we have kind of the UN language, which is what I always uh, call, I'm American, so I always say that's insider baseball. Um, you know, that's for like the, the real policy wonks. And then there's the other language. And, and is that other language really resonating with our leaders? If it's not, how can we create um, kind of a call to them that really makes sense, um, as well as speaking to our, our clear audience of, of kind of UN folks. Um, so I, I would I would turn it back to all of you, um, but certainly I can say that, you know, as a um, kind of leading on the comm side, I can help to push the conversation more in that direction as we continue on through 2024. I think this could be a, a, a homework for all of us for the, the, the end of the year break to, the, to think about it and come back with refreshed minds and, and hearts and, and respond to this question. But from my side, David, I think one thing we should say is that um, we all have experiences race to zero. We have all experiences, commitments. And we were all saying that, look, we are committing it, but we are aware it is, the challenge is so huge as well as opportunities are so huge that we cannot do it alone. There is no city and region in the world that can meet their climate neutrality goals without their national and community partners and global processes. I think the key message is that from now on, we should say that you're not alone. There are so many nations that have accepted to work together with you. 
So this gives you the confidence that you should be more ambitious and this should give you the more opportunity to reach the resources, technical, financial, political. And that, I think, type of message we should start to communicate as early as possible, as Ariel mentioned. David, we would look forward to joining you in the, the June, January onwards so that we develop this together and, and, and bring really uh, clear and very, very uh, focused answers to this kind of uh, challenges and, and, and embrace this as new opportunities. We are just one minute over our planned uh, timing, but I think we are really reaching to the uh, end uh, of, of, of our talks. We have seen a couple of feedbacks from our colleagues who are typing in the Q&A box. Um, um, good. Andrew is also saying, I mean, uh, Canadian leaders, Australian leaders, they were, I mean, let's be realistic. In the past COP, that we did not have so many of them. This year, Canada and Australia were one of those delegations who were strong in their subnational leaders' participation. Thanks to ELCAS, let's be realistic. If we did not have ELCAS, this wouldn't be possible. If we did not have this powerful partnership within presidency, opening the doors, Bloomberg, putting all the possible resources on the, on the table, we would not achieve this result. So now it's time to bring back home and, and make sure that this is um, this is uh, this is now brought into the table. One thing, again, you can talk to your local media. I know Ariel has a good compilation of all this media coverage. Maybe we should also make this accessible. We have seen so many good local codes. I think that's exactly we have to tell them that what happened in in UN is also relevant to your local newspaper columnists and that they readers of your uh, journals so that they can understand better what we achieved there. Um, Malin is also sharing similar feedbacks. Um, I, I mean, she's a commissioner to the mayor of London, as I mentioned, and that's exactly responding to you, Ariel. Uh, speaking as a commissioner of the mayor of London to the mayor of London. Important to emphasize that communities themselves can self-organize for local stock takes, as we did with London Climate Action Week. Exactly. We will not wait for COP, but we will make sure COP is delivered to our local leaders. Um, these type of messages are all powerful and making us be confident that there was it was a worthwhile effort why we have been doing this for 30 plus years, because we now see Real things moving forward in the right direction. With that, once again, we're also starting to lose our participants from the audience. So I think we reached the end of our session. Once again, from ICLE World Secretariat and ICLE family to all LGMA partners, a huge thank you to all your collaboration, support, and wish you a fantastic period for relaxation and look forward to meeting you in January onwards. Take care. Bye bye.